just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring ting tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the snow. We're riding in a wonderland of snow. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, it's grand. Just holding your hand. We're gliding along with a song of a wintry fairyland. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy cozy are we. We've snuggled close together like two birds of a feather would be. Let's take that road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. There's a birthday party at the home of Farmer Gray. It'll be the perfect ending of a perfect day. We'll be singing the songs we love to sing without a single stop. At the fireplace we will watch the chestnuts pop. Pop, pop, pop. There's a happy feeling nothing in this world can buy. When they pass around the coffee and the pump. Pie. It'll nearly be like a picture print by Courier and Ives. Oh, these wonderful things are the things we remember all through our lives. These wonderful things are the things we remember all through our lives. Just hear those sleigh bells ringing, jing, jing, jingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a lovely weather for a lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Thank you, John Pizzarelli. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and happy holidays to all. From high atop the office arena, welcome to the first annual Fans for the Cure online virtual holiday party. If you are looking for the Gilligan's Island reunion call, please double check your Zoom and uh, go through that passcode and try logging on again. With Pierre Maguire and an all-star cast, I'm Mike Emmerich, and it's my honor on behalf of Fans for the Cure to welcome you to tonight's festivities. Here is a sampling of our guest list tonight, generously described in my script as a cavalcade of stars. From Curb Your Enthusiasm, Red Oaks, Mad About You, and hundreds of TV shows, films, and Broadway plays, actor Richard Kind. He just produced an album by James Taylor that is nominated for a Grammy singer-guitarist and wiffle ball pitcher, John Pizzarelli. From the National Baseball Hall of Fame's Class of 2014, 305 game winner, and a very good hockey player, Tom Glavin and the executive director of the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, a urologist with more degrees than a Russian protractor, our good friend, Dr. Willie Underwood. Our honoree tonight is a Hall of Famer who played for the Expos, Cubs, Red Sox, and Marlins. Andre Dawson's baseball exploits won him entry in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, but the story of how he came to the aid of his Miami community during COVID is one you need to hear. And finally, the glue holding it all together will be Mr. Talking Baseball himself, voted unanimously to the All Hallows High School Hall of Fame, Fans for the Cure's founder, Ed Randall. It is now my pleasure to pitchfork things downstairs and between the benches and inside the glass to my broadcast partner, Pierre McGuire. Take it away, Pierre. Thanks, Mike. Can't say enough about our matchups tonight, and it's all for a great cause. The support groups and long lists of prostate cancer awareness and educational programs run by our good friend Eddie Randall and fans for the cure. First, keep an eye on Tommy Glavin, the 69th overall pick in the 1984 NHL draft that saw Mario Lemieux end up with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Kirk Muller, number two, end up with the New Jersey Devils, but Glavin wasn't just a great baseball player. He was an all-Merrimack winger out of Bill Ricca High School in Massachusetts. Also, as you just saw, there's a bearded virtuoso, Johnny Pizzarelli, out of hockey powerhouse Don Bosco High School, just off Route 17 
in Ramsey, New Jersey. Past the Ramsey Outdoor Store, where Georgie Fan ran a tight ship as a football coach and gym teacher, where he loved to wear shorts year-round. And finally, what else can be said about the man I'm about to introduce? He won four gold gloves and an MVP with the Los Angeles Dodgers after playing football at Michigan State under the great Duffy Doherty, who grew up in Barnesboro, Pennsylvania, whose actual first name was Hugh. So here he is, the pride of George Chamberlain High School in Tampa, Florida, the board chairman of Fans for the Cure, the great number six, Steve Garvey. Well, thanks, Pierre, and thanks for remembering Duffy Doherty, the great uh, Irish coach and, of course, my mentor at Michigan State. Uh, and the number six, spent almost 20 years in uh, Dodger and Padre uniforms wearing six, very special to me. But even more importantly, about six years ago, I came down with prostate cancer, had a radical prostatectomy, and through the grace of God, uh, I'm here today. And I, uh, as always, as we do, want to give back. And I gave Ed Randall a call, and I said, uh, can I be a foot soldier for you? And he said, would you like to join the board? And uh, a little bit later, I became chairman, which I'm truly honored. Uh, 2020, uh, a different year for all of us, and a different year for fans for the cure. A tremendous challenge for us, a uh, tremendous challenge in fundraising, and I think we've done a good job of uh, keeping our, our hand on the rudder of the good ship, Fans for the Cure. Uh, it's a year that has challenged us to uh, be creative, and uh, the online programs that uh, we put together, the men's and women's support groups, uh, have been well received. 21, uh, it's more the same in terms of online. We've all learned how to uh, to go online, I know this is my 250th Zoom call, I think. I only did a handful before last April, but it's the new communicator now. But we're going to continue to do online programs because it's going to, it's going to reach all the people, the people that are newly engaged, uh, those of us that have uh, been part of the family for years. But it's going to also continue to reach men who need to understand that the single greatest men's killer, prostate cancer, needs to be addressed. We need to take our PSA, we need to see our doctor, and we need to stay on top of it. Uh, this also means that uh, hopefully we'll get back to our, uh, our uh, health fairs, our screenings, and uh, that fabulous uh, uh, road trips of the minor leagues and the major leagues, which we have made famous throughout baseball. Uh, we're going to continue to get back to that, and thanks to Academy for all the things they've uh, done for us through the years. Uh, to all of you, uh, even though 2020 has been a challenge, 21 will probably start slowly and it's going to really roar to a great finish and set the, the base for the future. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight uh, and have this wonderful evening of, of celebration this Christmas week. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce uh, a friend of fans for the cure. He went to Northwestern, a little competitor of, uh, of Michigan State, but more importantly, he's known uh, for Curb Your Enthusiasm. And uh, I'd like to uh, now welcome our friend, Richard Kine. Thank you, Steve. And let's hear it for Steve Garvey. Uh, amazing record over 1,100 times, 1,100 consecutive games for the same manager, Tommy Lasorda. Statisticians actually have, uh, have come to the conclusion that uh, over 22,000 times, Steve Garvey, under the ages of Tommy Lasorda, heard the word fudge. So, uh, Hats off to you. Uh, it is an honor to appear here tonight on behalf of Ed Randall, who I love, and even more for Fans for the Cure, such an important organization. Uh, and uh, what an honor. Uh, you know, I've been honored to uh, play on Broadway, play Carnegie Hall. I've played uh, the Hollywood Bowl, Lincoln Center. And uh, although this honor comes nowhere close to those honors that I had, this is indeed an honor. Uh, and I'm grateful to be here, and I'm really grateful to talk about prostate cancer. Uh, it is a serious subject. It is one that I have been uh, trained about, not just by Ed, but by all my doctors, been tested. And it is such an easy, easy thing. It's a blood test. It's a, it's a PSA screening. Uh, uh, you just go to your doctor. If he starts pulling out a rubber glove and Vaseline, uh, you're being bamboozled. So don't go there. That's still a test, but not for the prostate cancer. The prostate cancer is the important thing. And because it's so easy to test and so easy to prevent, go and do it. That's why we're here tonight. 
okay? Uh, just ask your doctor, go online. If you can't do either of that, uh, Ed will g give you a doctor. Just give him a call. He's just sitting at home with his thumb up his ass. He's waiting for anybody to call. So please, just go out and do it. These are tough times and you're scared to go to the doctor, but this is, you should be even more scared about the advent of prostate cancer and with such an easy thing to prevent. Please, please go do it. And the day will come when we're all sitting together with a beer and we're laughing and there'll be no mute button and uh, you won't freeze. And well, though I don't know how some of you drink, so maybe you would freeze, but still we'll get together and this will all be over. So let's just stay alive because of COVID and let's stay alive because of prostate cancer and let's prevent it. It's so easy. I'm begging of you. But that's why we're here. Thank you very much. I'm Richard Kind, and see you soon, I hope. Thanks so much for the kind words, Richard. Richard Kind, everybody. Understandably, we're going to hold off on posting your health tips to our website until we get our medical advisory board to weigh in. But there's some words I've never heard used as verbs. In fact, we couldn't even use them all. As for Lasorda's profanity calculations over Steve's 1,200 games playing for Tommy, they seem spot on, yeah, or maybe a little bit low. Our next performer is a visitor from the East, and to introduce him, we are honored to welcome a play-by-play -play announcer from the West. He is a friend of Fans for the Cure and the television play-by-play -play voice of the Seattle Mariners. Here's Dave Sims. It's indeed a pleasure to welcome a special guest from the East. Welcome once again, Osage. Now I hold in my hand these envelopes and as a child of four can plainly see, they have been hermetically sealed and stored in a number two mayonnaise jars on Funk and Waggle's porch since noon today. No one knows the contents of these envelopes, but you in your divine and mystical way will ascertain the answers having never before seen the questions. Okay, Karnak uh, need complete quiet, which I'm sure he'll get. Let's do our first one. Miss Nomer. Miss Nomer. What does Mia Ham do when her husband is out of town? All right, let's try the second one. Six to four to three. Six to four to three. Explain how Ed Randall got 340 on his SATs. May you wake up under an irregular camel. Let's try another one. Karnak, need complete quiet and getting it. Halfback. Halfback. What do you expect when you lend Richard Kind 20 bucks? Next start again. Conjunctivitis.com. Conjunctivitis.com. Name a site for sore eyes. <laughs> Karnak hold in his hand the final envelope. Not a moment too soon. Never never land. Never never land. What did the players yell at the pilot on a plane bound for Buffalo? Hi, I'm Tom Glavin. It was an honor and a privilege to play 22 seasons in the major leagues, but I also enjoyed those four years in the minor leagues. Nothing can carry me back faster to those days than the side of a bus, preferably an older bus but really any bus will do. The buses of my memories transported 20 guys in their teens and early 20s, all carrying their hopes and dreams and a few wisecracks to baseball fields all over the country. 2007 marked the beginning of what remains a productive and lasting partnership, minor league baseball and fans for the cure. For the past five years, the 125 stop minor league road trip for prostate cancer awareness has been underwritten by our generous friends at Academy Bus. 
As they say at Academy Bus, we'll be in Greenville in no time. I try not to tell my wife this, but there are days when I find myself longing for the uncomplicated monotony of a 10-hour bus trip. You haven't lived until you've traded dry cleaning secrets with the Fayetteville Woodpecker. And so, fans for the Cure will be coming back to the minor leagues when the ballparks open and we are once again permitted to celebrate the game of baseball in person with one another. We sure do miss seeing you at the games. It's just not the same without you. On behalf of Fans for the Cure, I want to thank you for your everlasting support for the game and for the people you love. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland, gone away. Is the blue bird here to stay? Is the new bird? He sings his love song as we go along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the middle, we can build a snowman and pretend that he is Parson Brown. We'll have lots of fun with Mr. Snowman until the other children knock him down later on will conspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland in the middle we can build a snowman and pretend that he is parson brown he'll say are you married we'll say no man but you can do the job when you're in town later on we'll perspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland yes walking in a winter wonderland oh we'll be walking in a winter wonderland Hi, everybody. I'm Ed Randall, founder of Fans for the Cure, and it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's honoree, who's a Hall of Famer on at least three counts, for his brilliant career as a major league ball player while somehow playing 21 seasons through the pain and limitations of 15 knee operations, for how he then stepped forward to be heard as a survivor, role model, an activist in the fight against prostate cancer, especially within the black community. And in these uncertain times, in these challenging times, for how he serves and supports his Miami community through his work with his Paradise Memorial Funeral Home. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Andre Dawson, Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2010. Andre, I don't know about you, but I can hear the roar of the crowd. First of all, congratulations on being the Fans for the Cure 2020 Person of the Year. Ed, thank you very much, and I am deeply honored. Andre, you were diagnosed with prostate cancer, and I was touring spring training camps, and the, at the time you were with the Miami Marlins, and they share the facility with the St. Louis Cardinals. And after I got done talking to the Cardinals, I walked over to the Marlins, and unforgettably, you said to me, before I made my remarks, you said, uh, I need to talk to them to go public. They need to know. Uh, talk, if you will, about the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Well, I had never... Uh, really taking the liberty to talk about it at all. When I was first diagnosed, I sort of put it off because it was uh, after a uh, early spring training physical. And when I was confronted by the doctor, he said, you, you may want to go see a urologist later on. When I decided, okay, if it's not urgent, I would rather wait until the season ends, which is, you know, how it kind of played itself out. And then I did go and do a follow-up. Uh, at that point, everything appeared to be fine. However, the doctor did make a recommendation to me. He said, you may want to go the route of doing a biopsy 
uh, just to be on the safe side. And uh, I was all on board. We did the biopsy and uh, I received the bad news at that point. He looked at me and he, he had this grim look on his face and he said, um, I'm, I'm sad to tell you that, you know, we did find the cancer. And I went sort of numb for a minute because the word cancer frightens you. And I, I have known, I had known of individuals, some family members that had passed from pro prostate cancer. And uh, the, my only reaction was, well, doc, let me know what my options are uh, because I want to tackle this, this thing head on. And he did go over my options with me and uh, I elected to uh, go with the robotic surgery. Um, I just wanted to rid uh, myself of the problem completely. And, uh, you know, when we went through it, I was aware of uh, probably what the consequences were going to be. But I just wanted to make sure that I had it out of my body. Sure enough, when we did the follow-up blood work, uh, I came out uh, on the positive side. I was mid-40s uh, when I was diagnosed. And ironically, my brother was diagnosed earlier than that. And that's the scary part, uh, because for me, I was healthy. I always felt that I was in the best of shape. And I was an avid in the gym guy, but it didn't matter. As we know, and our audience knows, prostate cancer disproportionately affects the African-American community. And so now does COVID. What has been your message to black men at your church, Andre, and in your community? Well, like prostate cancer, COVID is another hurdle uh, that you kind of got to cross. But the only thing, COVID can take you out a lot quicker. And uh, you can get afflicted uh, not knowingly. And the thing you got to keep in mind is that not only do you, you know, practice the principles in place, uh, what the protocol is, you I got to go beyond uh, wearing a face mask, washing your hands, so on and so forth. There's a vaccine that's ready, readily available. Uh, when the point in time comes uh, for you to take the vaccine, you can't be frightened by it. Uh, I'm considered an, an, an uh, elderly senior citizen. I'm thankful. I can't wait to, to take a shot itself. Andre. Tell us about the life and career change that took place for you about a dozen years ago. Well, I started out as an investor in a funeral home, and it was shut down by the state. Lo and behold, it fell into my lap uh, to become the owner, and I just prayed on it. I knew it wasn't my cup of tea. This is something I would have never envisioned doing post-career, but I said, you know, if this is where God is, uh, and I prayed, I said, God, if this is where you have placed me at this time, I know you got my back and I'm going to put my best foot forward. And so I look at it pretty much as a God sin. I think this is where God has placed me uh, as far as, you know, where I am today in my, what, in my life. And I told my staff, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about getting uh, family through uh, probably their most difficult time in their life and uh, helping them along with the process uh, of moving forward. When you go back for induction day at the Baseball Hall of Fame and you speak to your fellow Hall of Famers, what's their reaction to what you're doing now? I get a lot of funny stares <laughs> initially. Uh, I, I kind of like to talk a little bit about Ricky Henderson because the first thing Ricky said to me was, you're doing what? And uh, then I had to kind of break it down to him. Jim Rice uh, echoed the, the same sentiments. And, you know, I just tell him, hey, it's not as bad as you think it is. I always felt that at some point in my career, I fell into a leadership role. And this is what, you know, you're taught um, uh, as, a, as a funeral home operator. And uh, what life teaches you is that, you know, you, you still got to carry on uh, the challenges of being a leader.
As you can imagine, we have a large group of baseball fans joining us tonight, and uh, they've sent notes about how much they loved watching you play ball. Uh, as you look back on your 21 seasons, uh, what are your happiest memories? Well, you touched on it uh, at the outset. Part of it is uh, the crowd roar, uh, the fans. You play the game itself for the fans. You're blessed with the talent, with the ability to be one of a very – select hand, uh, a hand few that actually get this opportunity. The relationships were special to me. I just felt that I, I garnished a lot over the course of my career. Uh, there were some you like to, to remember and some you kind of forget about also. But looking back at, you know, you play the game and you receive tons of accolades, especially if you have longevity like I did, and you just, you know, reminisce about that to a degree, but uh, the fun part of it was going out there, hearing the crowd roar, uh, the com camaraderie in the clubhouse itself, and uh, you know, just having uh, people to be uh, uh, experienced, you know, your life with going forward, people uh, who you can say that you, you know, you consider a friend and you have the relationships for the rest of your life. Uh, as much as you love the game and, uh, you know, the things that you accomplish playing the game itself, uh, those are the things that kind of touch upon you and uh, you remember the most. Thank you, Andre. Congratulations. You have always been there for us. Uh, it's been an honor to have you share your story, your insights with our community at tonight's event on our podcast and so many times with me on the radio. Great thanks and best wishes to you and please stay safe. Ed, my friend, thank you. And now we'll hear from one of the Northeast's top urologists who is a staunch public policy advocate for health equity. I'm Dr. Willie Underwood. I'm a urologist in the Buffalo area. We're also specialized in public policy issues. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Fans for the Cures outreach program in the black community and in areas of our country chronically underserved by the healthcare industry. When the world allows us to gather in large groups again, as I know it will, I expect to see Fans for the Cure where it was in the early months of 2020. Speaking to groups of black men about the importance of PSA testing, being a presence at the community health fairs and helping to organize free prostate cancer screening in collaboration with their healthcare partners. Ed and his team are not afraid to ask others as they ask of me, what else can be done to help black men beat this disease? I can promise that they will hear from me often. I look forward to sharing ideas and helping to change the programs with health with fans for the cure in 2021 and beyond. Thank you. First of all, hello, and my thanks to fans for the cure support group for allowing me to join your meetings from time to time. While I have not faced the same experiences that you have, I must thank Ed Randall and Joe Cosgrove for allowing me to come and share with you at your meetings from time to time. As part of the African American men of Westchester, that's very special in that that's where uh, Ed Randall and I and I met a couple of years ago, and so that co relationship continues right up to this minute. As co-chair of the AANW Health and Education Committee, I focus on several health issues and have helped produce several videos for community viewing, including sickle cell disease, COVID-19, colon cancer, and now prostate cancer. In an attempt to raise the awareness of health issues that require our attention and support. I am providing our most recent video presentation to Fans for the Cure 
featuring Dr. Brian Harper, who has speak to the group before. In fact, we had a light moment during our, during our filming. I shared that I'm having my next physical exam in about a month. And so I asked if I should go ahead and do it. And he was very emphatic by saying, and he told me, don't miss your appointment. And so I promised that I will not miss my appointment. You guys have lifted my understanding about the medical issues, and I hope to continue to visit your meetings from time to time. Finally, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Thanks, Ed. I'm Karen Schaefer, facilitator of the Women's Support Group through Fans for the Cure. Before I begin talking about the Women's Support Group, I'd like to wish everybody a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, a little belated, a happy Kwanzaa, and a very happy New Year. Much better than 2020, I hope, for everybody. Anyway, we started the Women's Support Group for spouses, partners, and caregivers of patients with prostate cancer to be a safe and comfortable place for us to talk about our feelings and our experiences. We at Fans for the Cure understand that prostate cancer is a, a type of cancer that really affects marital relationships and intimate relationships. And sometimes, as women, we need a place to talk about what we're experiencing, what we're feeling, and also to get our questions answered. So we'll bring in some expert speakers to answer our questions, questions we may not feel comfortable asking our spouses or asking the doctor in front of our spouses, or maybe they were asked, but we didn't feel like we got enough information or that we feel comfortable with the information that we got. So we will that bring people in that can discuss it with us and help us through this. This journey is a tough one for all of us, not only the, the patients, but also the spouses and partners. We meet every other Tuesday night at seven o'clock. So bring a cup of coffee, bring a cup of tea, hot chocolate, a glass of wine, a snack, and we'll sit and we'll talk about our experiences and what we are going through. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Well, Karen, thanks so much. And Ed, we're all excited about our online support groups and programs. And Karen, thanks so much for all the wonderful work you're doing with the women's group. And Steve, I owe you a debt of gratitude along with our board of directors for their tremendous support when the charity made the decision to begin online programs in 2020. And, and you know, there's something else. Uh, this December 22nd, according to Baseball Reference, is a very, very special day. A day in which you, Steve, would be celebrating even if we didn't have 100 people here. So to help you, we invite the ladies and gentlemen watching at home to sing along to a song that they know and love with Paul Cartier, the Yankee Stadium organist, doing the honors. Here we go. Well, that was fabulous. Thanks so much. Ed, remember when you were 72? I get it. Uh, I want to thank all of you uh, for joining us this evening. It's about time to wrap up the festivities in this Christmas week. But uh, thanks to Zoom for bringing us all together. Uh, and uh, obviously, so many friendly faces joining us tonight. And we have so many new people to thank, Steve. So let's do that right now. Many thanks to our sponsors here tonight, Investors Bank, Signature Bank, TD Bank, Rawlings Sporting Goods, our friends Ray Mira and Chuck Todd, our healthcare partners, and our good friend Steve DeGroote at Dutch Productions and Liam Dempsey at LB Design. Thanks, Eddie. On behalf of the Garvey family, Candace and I and all of our children, we want to wish everyone a, a wonderful holiday season. We all know that 2020 has been a great challenge to all of us especially our charity. But I think that even though 2021 might start slowly, uh, with the hard work and dedication, it'll probably be our best year. God bless everybody. And you too, Steve. And uh, my producer tells me that we have purchased so much Zoom time, we have a little extra. So with that, let me introduce my friend of 40 years, John Pizzarelli. 
Okay, let's see if we can get everybody singing along on this one. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten Where the treetops glisten And children listen And children listen To hear the sleigh bells in the snow Be white.